from inventions dating back millennia to modern day treasure finds. Here are 10 ancient Roman discoveries. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 10. Julian Calendar The Gregorian calendar that we use today is actually modelled on a similar system going back to ancient Rome. In their early stages, Roman calendars were influenced by Greek models, which followed the lunar cycle. However, the Romans considered even numbers to be unlucky and altered the calendar so that each month had an odd number of days. Then in 46 BC, Julius Caesar proposed a reform of the calendar with the help of astronomer Sosigenes. The new version, named the Julian calendar, aligned itself with the solar year. There were 365 days in a year, grouped into 12 months and even accounted for leap years. The calendar was almost flawless, except that it miscalculated the solar year by 11 minutes, which eventually threw it off by several days. Nevertheless, the calendar would guide the world for a very long time, until it was gradually replaced by the Gregorian calendar, promulgated in 1582. Number 9. Codex The history of writing goes back far in time, to the clay tablets used by the people of Mesopotamia and then the ancient Egyptians, who used papyrus books in the forms of scrolls. Paper wouldn't be invented until the first century in China. A number of civilizations have made advancements in the way we preserve the written word. Yet Romans are credited for inventing the bound book, called a codex. The word is derived from Latin and is currently used to describe the universal format of printed books in the Western world. The first codices consisted of bound stacks of wax tablets or animal parchment, which made up the pages. Before we continue with our list, answer this question. Who is credited as an initiator of the codex-style book in ancient Rome? Is it A. Marcus Tullius Cicero B. Julius Caesar C. Marcus Aurelius or D. Marcus Terentius Varro Let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. Number 8. Aqueducts an aqueduct is a watercourse built to carry water from a source to another point that's farther away. The term which originated in ancient Rome can also be used in reference to a bridge that carries water over an obstacle. When it comes to aqueducts, the Roman standard for engineering went unsurpassed for over a millennium. Roman aqueducts followed the contour of the terrain from downhill gradients and moved water through gravity alone. These multiple arch structures supplied water for drinking, latrines, public baths, and private households all over the empire from Africa to Germany. The Roman capital, however, was typically the site of the most advanced projects. The aqueduct network totaled hundreds of miles. The Pont du Gard in southern France was built by the Romans in the first century AD. It's a sublime example of Roman engineering that also features the characteristic multiple arches. The lower level of the Pont du Gard acts as a bridge over the Gardon River, while the upper level carried water to the Roman colony of Nemorsus. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 7. Roads The expression of all roads lead to Rome is based on the reality of the civilization's expansion. While roads might not seem an incredible advancement in modern times, they're one of the most important aspects of Roman progress. The Romans started building roads from about 300 BC and they would prove vital for the movement of armies, civilians, trade or official communication. At the peak of Roman development, 50,000 miles of road were stone paved within a 250,000 total road network. During imperial times, all the Roman provinces were connected by great roads while about 29 military highways emerged from the capital. The courses and even the structure of some Roman roads lasted for millennia and in many cases were overlaid 
by modern structures. Number six, Roman concrete. Few of the magnificent structures gifted to the world by ancient Rome would have been possible without concrete. They came from a period known as the Roman Architectural Revolution, where concrete played a central role. It freed the builders from the limitation of stone and brick, enabling the creation of larger and more complex designs. Concrete quickly hardened into shapes such as vaults, domes, and arches. Roman concrete, also known as Opus Semanticium, was different from the present-day material and consisted of volcanic rock, pumice, and quicklime. It had as much compressive strength as present-day concrete, but was far lower in tensile strength because it lacked reinforcement. The Romans used concrete extensively for more than seven centuries, and some of the structures they created are still around today. This durability is attributed to the use of volcanic rock and ash in making the concrete, which gave it significantly more resistance to fracture and even seawater. Number five, scrolls of Mount Vesuvius. When Mount Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD, it released 100,000 times more thermal energy than the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Roman cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum were completely destroyed by pyroclastic flows and buried under ash. In the 18th century, over 1,800 carbonized scrolls were discovered at Herculaneum. As of the making of this video, it's the only surviving library from antiquity that exists in its entirety. Because of their fragile state and the further damage they endured throughout the centuries, reading the scrolls has proven very difficult. Nowadays, scientists are using a 3D X-ray technique to bring to life the scroll's long-lost history. While examining the Herculaneum scrolls, experts also found that lead ink was used in their writing. Lead was added as a way to improve color binding and consistency. The discovery at Herculaneum thus preceded the first known use of lead in ink by several centuries. Number four, Frohm Hoard. Found in April 2010, the Frohm Hoard consisted of more than 50,000 Roman coins, dating from 253 to 305 AD. An amateur discovered it using a metal detector. It was then acquired by the Museum of Somerset for over $400,000. Made out of bronze and silver, the coins were issued during the reign of Carosis. He was a military commander of the Roman Empire who went rogue and declared himself emperor in Britain and northern Gaul. The coins were the first produced by a Roman emperor in Britain. They were a form of propaganda on Carosis' behalf and an attempt to legitimize rule. He declared himself emperor of the north and held power in Britain for seven years until he was assassinated by his finance minister. Number three, nanotechnology. The Lycurgus cup is a Roman glass drinking goblet that was created at some point between 290 and 325 AD. Its early history is unknown, but it most likely ended up in a church treasury from where it was taken during the French Revolutionary Wars. The cup depicts the mythical king Lycurgus trapped in vines as punishment for anger in Dionysus, the god of wine. It's an incredible example of nanotechnology used by Roman craftsmen. Nanoparticles of gold and silver were embedded in the glass material, thus enabling the cup to change color from jade to ruby red under various lighting. The effect is generated by the manner in which photons, the main components of light, interact with electrons. The process used by the Romans in creating the cup remains unclear. It was most likely discovered by accident and not very well understood or controlled by the craftsmen. So, who was the first to use the bound book model? If you chose B, Julius Caesar, then you're right. A number of historians agree that he created a primitive notebook by reducing scrolls to bound pages. He might have even used a papyrus codex. Number two, Hoxenhord. This is one of the largest collections of ancient Roman treasure ever found. It was discovered in Hoxon, Suffolk in 1992. After losing his hammer, a farmer asked his friend to help him find it. Using a metal detector searching for the lost tools, they discovered numerous coins, jewelry, 
and spoons, all made out of precious metal. The two men didn't dig any further and opted to notify the authorities and landowners. A team of archaeologists arrived on site the next day and discovered the treasure within the decayed remains of a wooden box. Dubbed the Hoxon Hoard, it consisted of hundreds of items of gold jewelry and silver tableware, as well as close to 15,000 Roman bronze, silver and gold coins. It dated back to the end of Britain as a Roman province, sometime after 407 AD, and most likely belonged to a single wealthy family. The hammer that triggered the discovery of the Hoxon Hoard was also found during excavations and subsequently donated to the British Museum. Number 1. Como Hoard In September 2018, hundreds of ancient gold coins were found in the Italian city of Como, in the basement of a former theatre. The coins dated back to the 4th or 5th century AD during the later period of Imperial Rome. Buried in the dirt, they had been placed in a two-handled ceramic container called an amphora. They were stacked in rolls and had the engravings of five different emperors on them which indicates they probably weren't part of a private collection, but of a public bank or deposit. When asked how much the coins were worth, one local archaeologist described them as inestimable. Thanks for watching. Would you rather find a small Roman treasure today or live as a very wealthy person in ancient Rome? Let us know in the comments section below.